Thankfully, I'm after the intermission, so the booze helps <laughs> you guys. I don't have to be as funny. All right, Steve. So the Conway Club can be described loosely as Bozeman's only DIY venue for the arts. That's my daughter, by the way. Located in the basement of an old granary downtown, it's home to a gallery, studios, the Bozeman chapter of Free Art School, bring your own art shows, and all those who have a passion for creating things, regardless of sex, age, political leaning, sexual orientation, or whatever. In the suburbia, this is embarrassing. In the suburbia of northern Mississippi, where I grew up outside Memphis, most of my peers hunted squirrels, wore rebel flags on their clothes, and listened to what they considered to be music coming out of New Nashville, while my friends and I skateboarded, grew our hair long, and listened to Nirvana. We played music instead of sports, read books by Kerouac and Howard Zinn in opposition to school. When we were finally old enough to drive, we'd venture into the rundown corners of Memphis to skateboard along the streets, and there we stumbled upon the DIY scene kind of by accident. These little hole-in-the-wall places, damp basements, and dilapidated warehouses no one outside saw the worth in. We'd be down there seeing and playing, meeting people, our people, creative types, outspoken and passionate. Before the internet was in every home, these places were our doorways into art, politics, environmental ethics, activism, through zines, and conversation. They ushered in the paradigm shift from the isolation of small town to outside world. While the people I went to school with were slipping into drugs, we were being encouraged by art punk 20-somethings to educate ourselves, to live healthy, to take care of one another, and use our freedom. This instilled a sense of community and camaraderie between the people involved. The artist was on the same ground as the observer, the musician, his or her audience. The art itself is what mattered on a separate plane from its creator. The message the work gave, the truth it shared was most important. Ideals that I carry with me every day, cornerstones of my own ethos and of the cottonwood. Fast forward, I moved I join the Navy, I move away, study nuclear power, get married, adopt a wiener dog, <laughs> struggle a house train, said wiener dog, take a permanent hiatus from the Navy, start back with a band in Memphis, drop out of the band, write a book, pick up the paintbrush for the first time, pack the van with my wife and my wiener dog, wound up in Bozeman 2008. <laughs> it doesn't take much time to realize my work had no chance to get into the galleries in Bozeman. It's a tight market dominated by bison, elk, trout, <laughs> cowboys. Traditional images people have long come to associate with American West, and I found my friend's art facing the same fate, the danger of not being shown. So in the summer of 2010, my friend Ryan Watson rented this old recycling shed on the northeast side of town on Cottonwood Street. It had no bathroom, no running water, no heat, no insulation, but the mice seemed to like it, and it was cheap, so it seemed perfect for an art space. <laughs> the first incarnation of the Cottonwood Club, it was born. That's from Google Earth. The idea that bringing on art show presented itself very naturally. It seemed like something that should work. A show where any artist could bring whatever they wanted, show it, and sell without any commission. I told everyone I knew about it, hung flyers, posted on the internet, not knowing if anyone would actually show up. But come the night of the show, the place filled with more contemporary art than I'd seen in all of Bozeman. People actually came, and at that first show, I was introduced to Jay Schmidt, who's sitting right there in the audience. A retired sculpture professor from the university who developed the free art school movement. This clean-cut guy in his 60s blew me away with his ideas on liberation of art and his provocative work. We instantly became friends, and the next show we featured his free art school manifesto, these simple black and white paintings of his ideals. After only a few shows, the old building sold, and we were kicked to the curb. Though it wasn't long before I was turned on this old sea granary on the southeast side. It was a basement, a wreck, no electricity, no lights. No water, cheap as hell, no one would want it, it was perfect. <laughs> so I signed a lease and spent the next five months cleaning the place enough to allow people in. <laughs> we opened the, sh the new location of the Cotton with the Bring Your Own Art Show in March 2011. The walls were made of plywood, painted with murals, the lights were pool cord bulbs. The space needed lots of work, but people showed up for one of the most memorable shows we've ever had. My dear friend Jesse Albrecht gave one hell of a performance that I'm sure no one will soon forget. While the venues I spent so much time in as a kid had its kind of us against them subconscious mentality to them, I never wanted the Cottonwood to share that. From the beginning, I've striven for the Cottonwood to embrace everyone, and we've grown to a space where all ages, gray haired painting landscapes right along teams of street art, can hold conversations on equal ground, one just as relevant as the other. Free Art School developed in a weekly drawing club in the fall of 2012, a group of artists meeting up most weeks since, working collaboratively, passing drawings back and forth, reworking and reworking again. It became an event where art students from the university, for example, can meet face to face in an informal atmosphere and discuss with professional artists the meaning and scope of art. We've been able to host many undergrad and grad shows, 
Performance artists, you would have nowhere else to perform. Filmmakers would nowhere else to screen the work. These types of work have nothing to sell, and since we don't pay our bills of money off commissions from the artists, as most galleries do, these budding artists are able to develop their skills down in our basement. The Cottonwood hosts all ages shows. It's one of, if not the only place in Bozeman, a kid can come and watch a band and hang out with their friends and speak with others about art and its importance without feeling out of place or being catered to because we all know how much they hate that. It makes them feel relevant and encourages them to keep pursuing whatever artistic endeavor their passions lead them to. When the Bozeman Soup organization began in 2013, I gave a short presentation on the Cottonwood and the community voted us to win the purse. It wasn't much, about $600, but with the money I was able to buy a new drywall, a new paint, and some <coughs> excuse me, track lighting to shine light on the work people brought. Money to support the Cottonwood has always come mostly from our own pockets. We've gotten some donations over the years, but not near enough to make things float. The Cottonwood Club cost me 10% of my family's income, and though I make no profit of any kind, the benefits I've reaped are beyond numbers. When we directly give ourselves to the community without expectations of making money in return, magic appears. The future of the Cottonwood is, is as a nonprofit. With enough support from our community, we'll be able to afford a proper space with light and natural air and natural light, moving out of the basins and into the streets, even drawing in artists from elsewhere, where we can make that much more of a difference. So the next show of the Cottonwood is a Bring Your Own Art Show. It's on February 28th. Doors open at 7 o'clock. Show up. Hang your art, introduce yourselves, meet other artists, buy something, support the scene, make it what you wish. We're all in this together. Thanks, guys. <laughs>